How's it going, everybody? My name is Kyle O'Grady. I'm a through hiker. I am a backpacker. I am a huge hiking nerd. And every single week on this podcast, we chat with other through hikers and other backpackers and other hiking nerds about their experiences on the trail. And uh, that's what we do. You know, that's what we do. Do you like that intro song? I actually heard the same song that I've been using since the start of this podcast in another YouTube video the other day is like of some guy fishing. I was with Flossie and it was like playing in the background and he was like, dude, that's, that's the song. And I was like, oh my goodness. Um, so send me a message somewhere uh, if you've heard that song in other places because it's not my song. Anyways, episode number 141. We have an awesome episode. Aisha Cording is on the show. She has hiked the PCT not once, not, I already made this joke in the episode, actually, so I'm going to stop it there. But um, you'll hear what I'm talking about in just a second. She's hiked the PCT a bunch of times. I'll just say that. And I had the pleasure of meeting her and hiking with her a little bit uh, on the PCT last year in 2022. And it was awesome. We go through tons of great stories in this episode. Of course, I asked her why she's hiked the PCT so many times instead of some other trails. And she tells a really funny story about how when we first met each other, which I didn't even realize this until she told this, you're gonna hear my reaction live. Um, When she first met me, she was kind of fucking with me a little bit. She knew who I was and she was fucking with me a little bit, which is pretty funny. So it was awesome. Uh, Her trail name is Heaps, by the way. That's what I refer to her as in this episode. And so Heaps, when you hear this, thank you so much for coming on. It was awesome and I'd love to do it again soon. Let's get into it, everybody. Number 141 with Heaps. All right. Welcome to episode number 141 of Trail Tales. I am so excited to welcome Aisha Cording, a.k.a. Heaps, to the show. Heaps, how's it going? It's going great. I'm I'm so happy to be here. This is fun. Yeah, this is gonna be this is gonna be awesome. So we're gonna get into Heap's whole story. I think it's pretty unique. I mean, and, and we'll talk <laughs> about that in a second because uh, Heaps has hiked the PCT not once, not twice, not four times, but three times, all the same direction. So we're gonna talk about that. I think it's awesome. I think it's yeah, it's it's unique. But to start, Heaps. Why don't you just go ahead and introduce yourself? Who who the hell are you? Sure. Uh, my name is Aisha, or Heaps, on trail. I started through hiking in 2016 um, on the PCT. I'd probably done two or three trips by then. Um, the most I'd ever done was two nights by that point. Um, hiked the PCT, ended up hiking the PCT three times, um, which is a little bit unusual, um, and absolutely no other long distance hiking trails just that three times um (laughs) which people think i'm a little bit odd for doing um but i love it um what else have i done i've done some bike touring things like that but nothing's really been as interesting as through hiking for me um i started yeah when i was 26 and then i did my last hike of the pct last year when i was 33 interesting three times so wait so you haven't done any other through hikes before Besides the PCD? Well, well, it's kind of a lie. I've done um, no other like notable through hikes in the States. I've done the Annapurna Circuit in Nepal, but it's I don't think it even qualifies as a through hike. Okay. I've never um, I've never even heard of that before. Yeah, yeah. No, it's pretty touristy. It's like quite well known. It's more like the Camino. Um, okay, sure. okay. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Also, this is a total side note, but I've struggled for years trying to classify what the Camino actually is. I don't even know shit about the Camino, to be honest, but I know a little (laughs) bit about it. And it's like, it's kind of a through hike, but it's not really the same. It's, it's interesting. Yeah. Would you call it's it a through like hike? A pilgrimage. Thing? A pilgrimage. No, it's more like a pilgrimage because you you go from like bedsit, you know, like bedsit to bedsit. Um, you get all your meals made for you. Um, it's like mostly roads. I hear a lot of it. I mean, there's many, many different caminos. Yeah. Um, but the main one that a lot of people do, it's it. Yeah, it's more a pilgrimage than a through hike. A through hike feels much more different than what I did in Nepal for sure. 
Yeah, I don't really know much. I, I've had a lot of people ask me over the years, like, oh, like, are you going to do the Camino? or Which I guess I don't even know which one they were referring to. But And I'm just like, I don't know. But I don't know shit about it, so I should probably stop talking about a trail I know <laughs> nothing about. Both of us know about the PCT, though. In fact, you probably know way more than I do. Um, but first, I guess, you're from New Zealand, which I guess maybe is relevant. I, I was saying that with an assumption that it's somewhat relevant to this next question, but maybe it's not. I don't know. Um, I should probably just stop talking and ask the damn question. So how how did you, not just when you decided to thru-hike, but how did you just first learn that thru-hiking was a thing, that the PCT was a thing? How did you even just discover all that? Oh, that's a good question. Um, so I worked at an American summer camp um, when I was 18 and when I was 20 as well. So I don't just like to do the PCT a couple of times. I like to do everything in my life um, again. <laughs> but I worked as a camp counselor and I actually worked near um, sort of hot springs in North Carolina. And I heard of a camp counselor the year before, afterwards you get on the visa a month or so to travel and explore America. And they had gone on the Appalachian Trail. Um, but in my mind, it was this like mountain man, like barefoot, he's foraging for food. And I was like, damn, that's crazy. <laughs> and that was really all I thought about it. I was like, damn, that's, that's insane. Um, but uh, when I, that was the first time I heard about it. The second time I heard about it was absolutely wild it was definitely watching the movie wild oh <laughs> i yep. thought i thought you were saying like it the, the, the time the second time i heard about it was crazy like it was wild but no it was literally like the movie wild <laughs> it was no oh yeah it's like so wild no it was watching that movie and for some reason because she makes it look terrible on that movie like it looks like the worst place on earth but for some reason people watch it and they're like that looks fun <laughs> You know what I mean? And I don't know why it makes no sense. And that was when I was like, well, what is this other trail? Cause I've heard of the Appalachian trail. And that was sort of like in my head a little bit, but I was like, this one looks beautiful. Yeah. So, so I don't know, maybe, maybe I misheard you there. Um, so you would like vaguely heard of it before, but then when you saw the movie, that's when you were like properly kind of introduced to it. Did I get that right? No, so I'd never heard of the PCT, oh, but okay. I'd sorry, been introduced sorry. to through hiking, through, through hiking. Um, gotcha. knowing about yeah, knowing about the Appalachian Trail, but I I knew really nothing about it. Um, I actually was a runner, like a road runner, and then um, I heard that trail running is much better for you. So it's sort of like this pipeline between trail running and being like, well, what's this hiking thing? You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think that's so funny that you learned about it from from wild which not that that's like a <laughs> yeah. unique story by any means but i feel like these days it's like most people are learning about it this is a, a generalization obviously but a, a lot of people i'll say are learning about through hiking from like social media and youtube and all those idiots that post stuff on youtube and yeah um no. but i i feel like back before all that it was more common for people to hear about it from like a walk in the woods or or wild and all this stuff so that's kind of interesting it's like a little bit of a a throwback i don't know but then again actually i don't even know i'm i'm off to a great start here today um i don't even know how old were you when you learned about it you said like what so you were you were in north carolina when you were 18 and 20 and then how much longer after that did you watch wild yeah so it would have been 18 or 20 when i first heard about the appalachian trail and then i you know didn't think about it again i was like mm. i'm not outdoorsy that's disgusting um <laughs> and <laughs> it would have been when i was 25 that okay. i heard about the pct i would say so then it wasn't that much longer after that that you actually were out in out in california oh yeah no this this idea just it takes a hold of your brain i swear it just starts as like this tiny thing and then you're like oh maybe because i was going to do the jmt and i was like i could do like a section like i could probably do a section like i won't die on that will i <laughs> and then i ended up just being like well you know what if i could make it the whole way um and my sisters um i've got many sisters they were very much not supportive of this idea that was taking root in my mind but I just kept it quiet and I was like, well, I mean, if other people can do it, like maybe I can make it as well. Okay. So there's, there's a few different like tangents we could go on here. Um, so your sisters weren't necessarily supportive. Did they end up coming around or like how long did it take 
before they came around? Like, can you talk about that, like, evolution, I'm assuming, a little yeah, bit? Yeah, they didn't come around. They didn't? Um, from the first hike until I was done. So beforehand, at my, like, leaving party, call it a party, my leaving very small gathering, um, <laughs> they told me, they were like, yeah, everyone in the family with like, the girls, uh, they were all convinced you might die. <laughs> and I was like, thanks, guys. Love your support. Appreciate it. <laughs> and I was like, am I going to die? <laughs> no. This was legitimate fear in my mind. I was, I was really, I was scared. I was super scared the first time I did it. And how long into the hike did that fear kind of dissipate? Well, I didn't think I was going to finish until I finished. Mm -hmm. um, I was always worried I was going to get taken out by an injury. Like, I don't know, back then I was a very anxious person. So I was like, something's going to go wrong. I'm going to get off trail for some reason. I, there's no way someone like me could finish, you know, not an athlete, like by any means. I mean, I ran a little bit, but I'm not known for my like athletic ability. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, yeah, I just really like, I didn't believe in myself at all. Um, but that did change a little bit as I, as I got, uh, in, into a stronger hiker, but yeah, I never thought I'd reach the terminus until you which did is funny now. <laughs> until I did three times until you did. Yeah. That's so crazy. Um, that's kind of funny on the AT. I was like very worried that I wasn't going to be able to finish, but then like around the halfway point, it kind of shifted and I feel like it went so far the other way that I was like starting to get a little cocky about how like I was going to. I don't know. It's different for everybody, I think that's right? a better way to be. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a better way to be. Yeah, I mean, it <laughs> depends on how you look at it. But <laughs> I mean, it, I mean, it's good to be confident, obviously. Um, yeah, definitely. But I think that that's something that like grows as you through hike for some people. Like I wasn't a particularly confident, like I was very shy my first through hike. Uh, most of the time I was like, I was just a very unsure person. I was like 26, but probably mentally more like 20. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. I will say when we met on the PCT, I didn't think you were shy at all. Um, yeah, no, that's changed a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> since. Probably because of through hiking. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Man, there's there's so many different ways we could go. Um, I'm gl <laughs> but, your, but your family did eventually come around by the end of that first that first go yes they did and um even though they thought the second time was a bit funny like they finally understood that this was like my thing i mean i've always been a little bit of the old one out in my family not in a bad way but they're like what the hell is Asia gonna do next <laughs> um and then on this third time they were the ones that sort of encouraged me and talked me into doing it the third wow time. talk about like yeah freaking total <laughs> total turnaround there that's that's awesome though and, and i've said this before but it's like very reasonable for people to be like worried about their loved ones going to do this especially when it's their first time because mm -hmm. people just don't people just don't understand they don't really get it they don't really know much about it um and so it, well it's a very weird concept right yeah yeah and it's i just think it's like very i mean it it could be taken to an extreme i guess but I think it's reasonable when people's families are like maybe not super on board at the start, you know, cause like it just, it's understandable. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. So you get the first one under your belt, 2016. When was the second one? Uh, 2018. So I only missed a year and <laughs> then I went back. <laughs> 2018. Okay. So I'm sure you've never been asked this question before. I'm sure mm -hmm. you've done other podcasts. You've talked to tons and tons of, I'm sure no one's ever asked you heaps why <laughs> you decided to do the PCT again, instead of going for the AT or the CDT or any other long distance trail. So I, 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 I gotta know why, why the PCT again? I mean, I get asked this a lot on trail as well, because it's hard for people to comprehend. They're like, why not tick off two things? It's hard for me list? to comprehend. I'll be honest, <laughs> but that's why yeah. I want to hear the answer. It's, well, it's a good question. Yeah, it is. Um, so at least the second time was because I knew if I went to any other hike, like I knew myself enough to realize if I went on any other through hike, I would dream about being on the PCT again. Like it, it had just captured something within me. And I would spend the whole AT or the whole CDT being like, Ugh, not as good as the PCT. You think so? Like, it, oh yeah. I would, I would have. And like, even if it was better, I still would have been like, 
God, I miss the PCT so much. <laughs> <laughs> the comparison like would have killed my hike. And so I was like, well, let's just do it again. Like, let's get this out of my system. Then if I am going to be thinking about the PCT, let's just do it like one more time. And let's just, let's just send it on the PCT one more time and then I can move on, which didn't happen, but you know, wishful thinking at the time. <laughs> well, I was going to say, so if that was your mindset kind of going into it, like clearly you, you, I mean, you ended up doing it a third time too. So I, I, I don't know, I, before we unpack that, that's just so, I said it at the beginning of the episode I think that's just a very unique story. I mean, I, there are other people that have hiked trails multiple times, but I feel like most of the time it's people who have also done other trails, maybe between them. I, I think it's pretty rare um, for someone to do the same trail two times in a row. That being said, you have done it. Have you heard from other people that have had a similar story and, and done the same trail like multiple times in a row like that? Yeah, a couple of times I've talked to um, a woman called Not A Chance, who was like one of my hiking heroes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and she's done it maybe like close on four times. Wow. Um, and she repeatedly did it. She was a repeat offender as well. Um, <laughs> repeat like year offender. After year. <laughs> That's a funny yeah. way to phrase it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I, I messaged her before this third time and I was like, hey, random message. Um, do you think doing it the third time is going to be like super weird? And she was like, nah, the PCT is different every time you'll have a blast, just go do it. And, and I did, you know, I think that, um, there's this idea that when you're doing the same trail, it's just going to come, going to become boring. Mm -hmm. But each time I met, like I met different people each time the experience was so different. I had three completely unique hikes. It was just the terrain and the stops that were the same interesting so you went nobo all three times yeah i yeah i don't want to go sobo i don't think i'll ever do the pct sobo unless oh. it's like some sort of yo-yo attempt which i also don't see but mm -hmm. you know sometimes surprises happen okay was there ever like when you were getting ready to do it the second time say or maybe the third time too was there ever any thought of switching the direction at all or, or were you like solidly like i'm doing a nobo each time oh Oh, if I was going to do it, it was always going to be Nobo, which meant in my third attempt, because I only found, like, only worked out a month out that I was going to go. I wasn't planning on through hiking that year. Um, I started May 21st. So I started super late when I could have just waited for Sobo. I was like, I can't wait. I have to go now. Interesting. Wait, okay. So your third time, you, this is news to me. You weren't, you weren't planning on doing the whole trail? No, I wasn't planning on through hiking at all. What? Wait, I'm <laughs> wait. So you weren't planning on? Sorry, you weren't planning. Oh, on... sorry. No, I wasn't planning on um doing a through hike that year. You were just out there for like, like a in... like a little no, while. No, I wasn't planning on hiking. I wasn't planning on going to America. I was planning on staying in New Zealand and living in this converted bus with my uh, ex partner. So it was like a total. The third time was like a total last minute kind of thing. Yeah, it was a month out, and I was like, "Well, let's book some tickets. Time to go." interesting okay so I, I i don't know like if there's something with like an ex-partner this maybe some things you don't want to like go into detail about about but what i gotta ask like what what led to like the third time heaps the third time on the pct last minute decision like how did kind of that all come together so fast yeah, so I haven't really spoken about this before, but I'm definitely comfortable speaking about it. Um, I was in a really, really terrible relationship, um, which I didn't realize was really terrible until closer to the end, because, you know, there's a lot of cognitive dissonance that goes on during a relationship. Mm -hmm. um, and I was pretty messed up. Like, I was a shell of myself. Um, and so the thought was, well, I don't feel like myself anymore. Like, I don't know who I am. I don't understand what's happened to me. This relationship has completely messed me up. Um, where's the one place where I feel exactly myself? Like, where's the place where I felt like I most belonged? Like I have support, like I, I feel strong and, you know, like all of the good things, all of the good thoughts about myself. And that was the PCT. And my sisters were like, just do it. I should go do the PCT. Like you're a mess. Go sort yourself out. Go hike it again. So that's actually the reason I hiked it the third time. And that would explain why it kind of came together so last minute. Um, that's yeah. see, this is so incredible because like 
I hate to say it, but when I think of someone doing the same trail three times, kind of going back to what you said a few minutes ago, it's like you just you you do kind of think like, oh well, it, it, maybe it's just going to be like the same experience over three times. And when I thought about going back and doing the AT again, for instance, I've always just been like, I don't know, like I've already just been there, I've already seen it. Um, but I I think kind of your story going into the third hike there really kind of just uh. You know, is, is an example of what you said of, of each hike being unique, even though it's the same trail. Um, even yeah, the circumstances definitely. going maybe, into it are, are, are unique. Yes, definitely. Like that was the fastest I've ever had a turnover for a through hike. I've been thinking about it for years before that for both of them. Um, but this last one, it was more like a desperate attempt to just be like, I need to go to a place where I feel like safe. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? I know that a trail sounds strange with that, um, but it had been such a huge part of my life. And it was really the only place where I knew that I could get away from it all and also um, have time to like heal and and understand what happened to me. So it's like, it's funny. It's quite like a a heavy start to a through hike. Yeah. I think that a lot of people have reasons for hiking that they, you know, don't talk about as much. Um, and I think everyone is out there for a reason, even when people say that they're not. Um, it just depends on whether you're willing to talk about that reason or not. <laughs> yeah, or even if you are, even if you have like um, kind of compartmentalized it yourself, yeah. even like there might be an underlying reason that's there, but you might not even like fully. I almost feel like that was kind of my case when I first, maybe not when I did, by the time I did the AT, but when I just first started getting into backpacking. Um, I was also like 16. So there was a lot of, <laughs> there's a lot of things going on. Um, thank you for, for sharing kind of what happened there and what led you to that third attempt. I know that might not be super easy to talk about like this. Um, and if you don't want to get like even more personal, we, we definitely don't have to, but, uh, I am just oh, curious. No, like, I'm very comfortable talking about it. I think talking about things like this that often sort of get hidden really helps the stigma around it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, no, definitely. And, and yeah, and I just appreciate you uh, being willing to talk about it like that. I'm sure there's definitely some people listening that can uh, can relate. So I guess um, just to sum it up, you go out there kind of on a whim looking for some healing, I think was one of the words you used a few minutes ago. Mm-hmm. And what were the results, um, which is a very like corporate way of saying this, but <laughs> did you end up finding some of that healing, some of that closure that you were looking for? Yeah. You're like, did you come up stonks or did it not work? <laughs> like... <laughs> Pretty much. Um, yeah, I did. I did. Especially at the start where I just needed like a break from my own brain. It was exactly, exactly what I needed. I don't awesome. regret it at all. The weird thing is, though, is that, like, there's parts of the hike that I don't remember that well, and I'm known for having, like, a particularly good memory. I think I was just so out of it uh, that it took me a while to sort of realize what I was doing. Um, But I was just, like, pushing myself through sludge at the start of the trail, and it was, we started way too late. It was miserable, but I was like, I'd rather be miserable here than sitting at home and, like, crying, eating a pint of ice cream. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, so you, you, I started late too. You started just a you know a little bit after me. But um, mm-hmm. when did you start on your first two hikes? I started on May the fourth. Be with you for my <laughs> uh, first through hike, and then it was May the tenth, the second time, which I should have really done wow. the sixth because then I could have done Return of the Sixth. Oh yeah, <laughs> um, but no, I didn't. <laughs> Three May start dates on the PCT. That's that's interesting. Yeah, I, was, I was cocky. Definitely. <laughs> I mean, shit. I, in hindsight, I wish I had started earlier. Um, I started in May on the AT too, and that worked out fine. But on the PCT, I kind of wish I'd start earlier. Maybe I don't know. It's. I mean, I do. Oh wish yeah, that, no, but... I wish I'd started earlier as well. Like, I mean, you you wouldn't have the people. Like, I love the people I hiked with, but I agree. It it's time in the history of the PCT to start earlier. And usually, I would have said, no, 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 start in May. Like, don't get out there way earlier. But now I've changed my mind with wildfires and everything. Absolutely. You want to start earlier. Yep. And, you know, for a lot of people, it's just a matter of when they can get the permits and stuff. Like, Flossie and I, we probably would have started a little bit earlier um, if we had gotten earlier permits. But mid-May is just how it worked out. Also, a fun fact. 
on the AT, I started on May 14th. And when I was choosing the permits for the PCT, I mean, you've been through it. So you, and a lot of people listening probably mm-hmm. know too. It's like when you finally get in, you're like waiting in this queue. It's just like kind of intense and a little bit nerve wracking. And you finally get in and then you have like a, a time limit to like choose your, I don't know if it's, it's probably still like that. I don't know. But um, you have to like, you know, make a fairly quick decision on your date and stuff. And so I was trying to juggle that and also trying to um, – work with Flossie because he was trying to do it too to like get his permit and like so we're trying to juggle all this stuff and like I got in earlier than he did and so there was like some maybe like late April dates available but I was like well by the time he gets into the into you know the system he's probably those dates aren't going to be available anymore we wanted to start together so I was like all right I'll just choose like a this whole time it was just like so panicky I was like all right I'll just choose like a mid-May and May 14th, the same day I started the AT, it was available. And then May 15th was available too, obviously, because that's the day we actually started. And for some reason, I wish I had chosen May 14th so I could have started the same the same exact day as the AT. But for some reason in my head, just thinking so fast, I was like, oh, that'll be an extra day. Better chance of him being able to get mm-hmm. one too. So I chose May 15th instead. But I wish I hadn't. <laughs> I think we still would have been fine. But um. <laughs> yeah. Do you do you ever think about the fact that if you had started on a different day, you would have known completely different people, and you never would have met the people? Well, you may have, but you may never have become friends with the people that you hiked with and the people that shaped your hike. I know, right? I like don't know. one day, like really could make a big difference, and, and not to mention and the people that you would have met instead, and who knows what could have came of that. I actually haven't really thought about this very much, but now that you're saying it, yeah, it's. It's pretty trippy to think about, isn't it? Yeah, I think about it all the time. I'm like, I could have just never known you. We could have just moved along on the same trail. You would which have happens a lot. You would have you would have passed us at some point, <laughs> even if we you started think earlier. I, would have passed you? I think so, probably. Yeah, <laughs> most likely. <laughs> but then again, it's like even like even if you passed us, we still might have never run into each other. You know, we might not have yeah, ever. Yeah, you met. could have been in town, and I could have been just you know going for it. I could have been night hiking or something and passed you and we never would have met. This has happened a lot. There's some hikers that I just miss. Yeah. You know, it, all it's the in, time. It's interesting how all that works. Like there's been a few people on the show in, in the past too that hiked the AT the same year that I did. Actually Rose. Um, and we we were like trying to figure out like when we would have crossed paths and it's just like, <laughs> you never know. You never know. It's, it's yeah. pretty funny. I mean, shit, you could even pass someone and not even like you know have an interaction and then later on be like oh yeah we must have passed each other but neither one yeah, of us I remember mean, it someone could be going to the bathroom i say going to the bathroom that's like it's a, so like true. a classy thing someone could be <laughs> digging a hole <laughs> yep. in it. and you could pass them and never see them for the rest of the trail it's so interesting to think about um yeah. so speaking of like passing people and running into people i think we should talk a little bit about how we met and so Let's see. It was just south of Wrightwood because I'm pretty sure this the day that Flossie and I met you was the day that we went into Wrightwood. Um, yes, it was. We were down at this like water source that was in classic PCT fashion. It's like a couple tenths of a mile down off the trail, <laughs> down a steep ass hill, and you get to like a little shack and there's like some water trickling there, which I, sh- I shouldn't complain. I mean, any water sources, especially in the desert, you should just be grateful for, but... Um, we're chilling there. We're doing our water, and then, uh, and then you walk up, and I recognize you pretty much immediately. But I didn't really know. I, I was like, I, I've seen her on Instagram. That's like basically what my thought was. Yeah. Uh, but I wasn't gonna say that, you know, which is stupid because lots of people have recognized me <laughs> on trail at this point, and it's it's never been bad. Like I I I I like it. I appreciate it. But for some reason, I just I was like, no. Nah. I'm too cool for that. Are you kidding me? Don't say it. I'm calm. Don't hiking. say it. <laughs> no. Just get your water. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. But we had a we had a nice chat. Um, I don't know. Do you? It wasn't really like you know, other than the fact that we just met. It no, wasn't like a it super... was like I, w- no, I was hoping this was going to come up because I don't know if I actually told you the full story about then. Have oh, okay. I told you no, I don't story? think so. Let's hear it. Oh. Okay, so um, I recognized you straight away. I was like, there he goes. Um, <laughs> and I was interested to know what you were like in person. Like, I think, it, it, like, when people are famous on social media, right, I, I love meeting them and seeing maybe if there's differences or whatever between their online persona and, like, the way they are on trail. And honestly, often they're just, like, as lovely as they are on social media. Most of the time, yeah. Um, I, I can't really think of anyone time. that I've met like that that wasn't, 
not that I've met like a ton of people that are social media yeah. people, but every, everyone that I think that I've ever met has been has been cool. I mean, I'm sure there's some out and there. And I feel suck, like but... this is unique to the hiking world as yeah. well. I just feel like they're just, a, you know, they're just going to be pretty cool. And that's just such a nice um, way to come into a conversation and be like, they'll probably be fine. But I was interested anyway. And um, I knew that you were ultralight. You're both ultralight. And I hadn't seen too many ultralight people <laughs> by then. And I was actually slack packing that day. Do you remember that? Yes. Yes, I do remember yeah. that. And so I was like, okay, time to fuck with them. So for some reason, <laughs> I just like to play stupid games with people. And I, I know that in particular, sometimes um, dudes get really annoyed when I've got a smaller pack than them, especially because I'm wearing a dress usually or some sort of like flamboyant outfit. And I love messing with them. And um, you came down and I was like, oh man, I'm slack packing. This is perfect. So what I did is I like purposely put my pack right in front of me and I was slack packing. So I had like nothing in there. And I was like putting my pack there and like rolling it down, rolling it down, rolling it down. And the look <laughs> on your face was the funniest thing I've ever seen. Because you were just like, what the fuck? <laughs> and like, as if I had like, you know, like two apples in my bag and I was good. Like there was <laughs> nothing. And the look on your face, like you tried to hide it, but there was definitely this moment where you were like, that is the smallest pack I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> I remember this now. I remember this now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I was just like losing it inside, but I just had to keep talking to you as if nothing had happened because part of it is just, <laughs> did me a good just job. pretending that I did. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's because my on-trail entertainment is just like fucking with people. No, that's great. <laughs> that's fantastic. I feel I'm trying to remember if um I definitely remember noticing the pack. So you didn't tell us that you were slack packing then. <laughs> no, I told you later on, like way later I mentioned that I was slack packing. <laughs> Um, but I didn't mention it at all. I didn't mention my pack, but I definitely purposely put it in prime position so that you just see this pack get smaller and smaller and smaller. That's so funny. I probably would have noticed anyways, because I feel like I'm always just like looking at, not, not in like a, like a, a bad way, but I'm always just like, you know, curious about people's Oh, I gear. do the same thing. Yeah, I feel like. I'm like, what you, what you got there? What, yeah. Why is that so small? So I definitely remember seeing your pack. I'm trying to, I, I feel like maybe this is just something I'm making up in hindsight, but I feel like I also mm -hmm. might remember Flossie and I having a conversation later that day or just commenting on like how like impressively small your pack was too or something. I can't remember. Although I will oh, say, maybe I, you still had maybe a pretty damn, it. you still had a pretty damn light pack, even when you had all your gear too. Like it was, it was definitely still lighter than mine. If I recall. <laughs> Thank you. Even That's, with the camera gear as well. For yeah. some reason. I, I mean, I'm, it's my third time out there. <laughs> it's like it's not it's unfair at that point <laughs> it's unfair that's so funny <laughs> so i'm trying to think so we went into wrightwood and then i don't think that we ran into you guys again until um the day before act in if i recall does that sound right yes yeah no that's right because what happened is my friend was slap packing us and we continually were taken back to his house which was so nice of him um and we were getting back on trail and we ended up waiting like six hours on the side of the highway because um a tire blew out Oof. and so we got sort of delayed and just after we'd met Toe and Pyro which you met from my trail family so I ended up being like half a day behind um and so we ended up sort of like meeting everyone again which was awesome because i was convinced like i was like oh maybe i won't see these people again but yeah no we ended up bumping into each other we i saw you again at that fire station yep yeah i remember yes. that so well there. i remember that so well because yes. like um i had kind of a rough day that day like i, I just got like kind of dehydrated and, and shit but we we got there mm -hmm. and i remember we were all chilling just at one of those picnic tables and this was you know we had briefly chatted you know, a few days before at that water source when you were fucking with me. But, yeah. um, you know, this is the first time that we actually like really got to talk. And I, I just remember we talked a lot about like emo music and stuff like that. And <laughs> yeah. I thought that was really interesting. Cause then we're, we just start naming off all these bands, like freaking four years strong and all this stuff. And I thought that was kind of interesting. I remember that pretty clearly. Yeah, I was like, how do these people know exactly the music that like I went through in my emo phase. Like even some of the deep cut bands, I was like, how the hell that's did they know that? That's my life heaps. That's, that's my emo phase has yet to end. 
Well, yeah, mine's still going. Like, I'll always be a little bit emo, you know? The, the emo to hipster pipeline is also very strong. Um, <laughs> but I've got, like, video as well of um, Phoenix singing, oh, and, and you and Flossie joining in, of, like, Anne Boleyn yes! in the tunnel one night. Like, yes, that, that made it into <laughs> one of my videos, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was so good. That was, like, that was, like, our song of the PCT. Um, was, uh, was it, what's that song called? Uh, so let me get this straight. Uh, Daylight Friend yeah. by Amberlynn. Yeah. yeah, by Amberlynn. What a jam. It was one of my favorite emo songs of all time. I love that song, yeah. I don't really know yeah. like too many Amberlynn <laughs> songs either, but I know that one. Uh, that's, that's so funny. Um, and speaking of the tunnel, so the next day we all went into Acton and it was just super, super hot. Um, Brandon yes. and Flossie as well have talked about this a little bit on the show, on their episodes, but... Um, super super hot we're all just hanging out by the pool there at the campground and like nobody wanted to hike out like everyone was hiking in (laughs) people were just rolling in all day and like nobody wanted to leave um but eventually we kind of all rolled out and we did this like what what was supposed to only be like a you know another like 10 miles for us um this night hike into uh god what's that town called not acton the next one uh agua dulce agua dulce yeah 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 i was just about to say that wrong yes (laughs) <laughs> I mean, I might have said it wrong too. I don't know. We were there for like five minutes, but <laughs> you had your mm-hmm, little crew just at that some point. Night pizza. Yeah, we rolled up. Finally, got to town. It was night at this point, point. Um, and I, I think that was the only time that w- we ever like actually like hike hiked with you for like a couple miles there, uh, right before town, which was cool. And we, we, we were at that spot where like some movie was filmed. Do you remember that spot? I don't even remember what yeah, the movie no, was. Yeah, no, Star Trek. An episode of Star Trek was filmed oh, here. Oh, okay, Star in Trek. In rocks. But we were there in the middle of the night. Yeah. <laughs> so there, the stars were nice. It but was weird. It was kind of weird, yeah. It was it was cool. I remember there was a porta potty there and I took a shit in it. And that was like one of the first times <laughs> in my entire life. Might be the only time in my entire <laughs> life, actually, that I took a shit in a porta potty. Because I hate porta potties, but... <laughs> I did it. I just did sit against porta potties. I, dude, who wants? I feel so bad for women who have to sit down to pee in porta potties, dude. Oh God, I hate porta potties. Don't even get me started. I just don't think about it. I don't think about it. I'm just like, I can't. I can't. How many other butts have have, have touched my butt now? (laughs) Oh God, (laughs) brutal. So brutal. But anyways, uh, we so we get to town. It's like probably close to midnight at this point, and then Quadzilla. Who I need to get on the show. I keep he's one of the people I need to reach mm-hmm. out to. Um Quadzilla kind of convinced everybody to do this to just keep hiking throughout the night. And I guess the logic yes. was it's so hot, like we'll just get our miles in now. And to be honest with you, I don't think I would have <laughs> gone for it if everyone else hadn't been on board and Flossie was down. Oh, same. I don't even like night hiking. Oh, like, you I'm say that, but I don't know, Heaps. You seem to be thriving that whole night. <laughs> <laughs> It's too much energy drink. That's yeah, my problem. That'll help. But I'm trying to remember. So everybody set out. I was a little bit. I was a little bit um, disgruntled about it, to be honest. But but I also understood. It was just like it was either that or just keep hiking in the brutal heat, like dangerously hot. Oh yeah, um, it was dangerously. It was so hot. It, it was, was so brutal. much hotter last year than I've ever experienced it by was, far. It was so brutal. And so we go overnight, yeah. everyone kind of ends up splitting up a little bit over the course of the night, but, um, you know, eventually Flossie and I are in the rear and we actually were almost mm-hmm. about to stop in camp at this one spot. Uh, at this point, you guys had all gotten ahead of us by like a couple miles maybe. And we, we got to this spot, we were like looking for spots for our tents. And then I think at this point we were maybe four miles from the road and we, we were like, you know what, dude? Let's just do it. We've been up all night. We've probably done, I don't even know, like well over 20 miles at this point, maybe closer to 30. And we were just like delirious, but we're like, you know what? There's a gas station we can hitch to. That's where you guys were all going to be. And I think I think we all had this vision of like this gas station just being, or maybe you didn't because maybe you had been there before, but I feel like everyone else had this vision of this gas station just having this like lush shaded green lawn that we could all just lay out on and sleep sleep during the day and then get back to it at night um 
which was not the case. So anyways... That was not the case at all. <laughs> you guys are ahead of us. The parking lot was very hard <laughs> underneath. Like, <laughs> it was not ideal. No, it was brutal. Flossie and I finally get to the road. I remember actually a, a quick... We might have talked about this on our episode. I can't remember. But we um, when we had finally started hiking again to get these last four miles... At this point, the sun's been up for a while. It's probably like, I don't know, like 9 or 10 a.m. or something. And we're so delirious... And like I was like Flossie, let's let's be mindful of rattlesnakes, okay? Let's be mindful of the rattle. Like we're not in our right state of mind right now, but they're still out there. Let's be careful. And of course, like a mile into the four miles that we had left, there's a rattlesnake. Flossie walks right by it, doesn't even flinch. And I was like, oh, <laughs> rattler, rattler. And he's like, oh shit. And anyway, so we get to the road. <laughs> we hitch to this gas station, and I'll never forget. Uh, I think I said this on Brandon's episode too, but you guys. We, we we get out of the car. We walk up to the gas station. You guys are just passed out. Like on the... There's no shade. There's no lush oh, yeah. green lawn that we were... Like none of that. It's just a tiny... We were looking dead. A, a tiny little corner of shade that you guys are all huddled into sitting on the concrete. And you guys look like you're... You, you know, you were all dozing off. But when we walked up or stumbled up, I should say, you guys all perked up and you were just like... Ah, you made it! You made it! And like, and it was so great. It felt so great to get oh, that little round of applause. It was a full-on party. We were like, because we were talking about it, and we were like, "Oh, we liked hiking with them. Like, are we <laughs> like, when are we gonna see them next?" Because we were planning on, you know, night hiking again and again and again. And we were like, "Is that gonna be the only time we're ever gonna see them?" <laughs> and then you guys just like appeared out of nowhere, <laughs> nowhere, and we just went, "Wow!" It was so and great. I think, Every last delirious ounce that we had left in us was used to cheer for all of you as you walked <laughs> up. <laughs> yep. Yep. Oh, man. I really, one of my biggest regrets is that I didn't film that moment. I should have. I was just, yeah. I, I didn't have it in me. I don't think I, I barely even touched my camera during that night hike, but. Wait, I have that moment. You do? Yeah, I do have that moment. I don't know if you can hear everyone cheering as much, but I definitely, yeah, I have it. Oh, I man, you got to share that with me, Heaves. Yeah, I ho- I'm pretty sure I've got your one. Okay, yeah. I would love to see that. That <laughs> that would be that would be such a good throwback. <laughs> That's so cool. Um, <laughs> how long did you guys end up night? Because we kind of lost you after that. Um, mm-hmm. I, well, I mean, we you know we saw each other later on, but how long after that did you guys night hike for? Uh, we just kept going because that night, um, I know that. Tristan or 60 Cent talked about it on his episode, but that's right. Um, yeah. They, I, I was like, I knew it came this... up again at some point. Yeah. It was, it was definitely with him. 60 yeah. Cent. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. And, um, half of us split off, including me where I did this road walk ostrich alternate and we slept in an ostrich farm <laughs> in the middle of the night. We couldn't find anything. It was, it was a very strange experience. And um, we ended up like sleeping next to a children's playground. Cause we couldn't figure out on this farm where Classic. the hikers were supposed to go. Yeah, classic move. Um, and everyone else did like a real long night hike through the middle of the night, like quite a distance. And they all um, took a sleep or what was supposed to be like actually just a rest. And they ended up <laughs> sleeping for like four hours just on the side of the trail, no sleeping bag, anything. <laughs> they all just passed out. We were so tired. Like I remember Toe was like losing it. Like I was losing it. We just like didn't know what was going on. We were sleep deprived, like – you get to a point where you just like can't even control your emotions anymore, you know? What I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, they, well, we ended up doing that, and then we went. We were at Hiker Town the next day, um, and then they did another night hike. Savage. And I crashed in the middle of it. Yeah, I crashed in the middle of it. I was like, I, your girl needs to sleep. <laughs> like, I'm not good. But then the next day, um, I just was full of energy because I'd finally had one night's sleep after like you know five four or five consecutive nights of having like basically nothing all yeah. night hiking it um and i was so pumped when i got into tachapi the next day like i was running i was literally running into town because i was like wow sleep is amazing <laughs> you got that right i i kind of yeah. had the same thing i was like i was so excited when i finally got to that road um i was like <laughs> I I, I I was also like hiking pretty fast those last few miles, just like whipping down. We were passing people, just storming by people, um, probably leaving a yep. cloud of dust in our wake. 
And exactly. I got to the road and like I pulled out the camera and I was just like screaming. I was like, fuck yeah, like let's go. We're gonna zero, <laughs> we're gonna sleep. Because that was the end of our night hiking too. And my freaking microphone was broken. And so none of it made it into the video. It was just silence of me just yelling, but you know, and, and Flossie no. was rapping. To, it was so good. And I, I totally botched the audio, but I you should have just dubbed it over really badly. I know. Just like I know. Completely out of sync. <laughs> it would have been great, but it's all good. Um, let's, uh, let's skip, let's skip ahead a little bit. And actually one thing. Yeah. Um, so I, I heard like 60 cents story of like kind of what happened at the end to him and he got off at Snoqualmie mm-hmm. pass, if I recall. Yeah. And but you guys kept going a little bit further, and you guys ended up making it further further than we did because we got off at Stevens Pass. But where did you guys end up getting off? We left at Stahikin, so we took the ferry into um, Shalan, and which w- is funny because it's exactly the same point, or almost exactly the same point that in 2018 I got kicked off the trail because of a fire. Oh man, um, can you? Yeah, t- but in in 2018 you can come in from Canada and touch the monument, so that's what I did in 2018 um and then in 2020 or last year that was not an option like you could not get to this monument at all nope what a freaking bummer um yeah what ended up going into your guys's decision to get off at steak and so for reference for those that aren't familiar with the pct as much um stahikin is what maybe like 90 miles north of stevens pass something like that and stahikin is where brandon and i were planning on going next and ultimately didn't that was going to be like our next resupply and i think i i remember now actually that we had heard that you guys had gotten off there and that actually played a little bit of a role in other people too we had heard about that we're leaving at various points mm-hmm. um you know kind of played a role in us making our decision but we, w- take me through like what happened in sahik and what made you guys uh decide that that was like the point where you needed to get off yeah, sure. So I think that the last stretch might actually be a little bit longer than 90 miles or quite a lot longer because you're out there for a while. So Section K is famous for being really gnarly, actually. It's it's like the tough one of the toughest sections on the whole PCT. Okay. Um, we probably... And that was after... We ended after that section. Okay. Um, so you haven't you haven't seen that yet, but nope. it's a treat. It is it is, is stunning. It is so stunning. Like so you're, you're going to have a great time. Yeah. So what happened is we we were all ready to go. We'd taken a zero in Leavenworth. Um, Sorry to mention that town, but we'd (laughs) taken a zero there and um, we headed out and then someone had service and we were hearing about these lightning strikes. There were a couple of fires and then we got the news that evening that we'd hiked out while sitting on um, the edge of a, you know, like a little, the edge of the trail um, overlooking the overlooking the pct there and someone was like it's closed and we were like what they were like yeah they've they've closed the border so we're just in the middle of nowhere we're we're like quite a ways in by that point we're like not going to turn around unless you know we we actually need to like we're going to be safety conscious Mm -hmm. but we're like crap and i just go well you know they're not going to open that that's not going to be open you know from previous experience um, the PCT keeps things closed for quite a while so that they can figure out the situation. Mm-hmm. And then I was just like, oh my God, it's, it's 2018 all over again. And it, it, to be honest, like I've seen the monument twice. And the first time I actually got to hike straight through, I just felt bad for everyone that had never seen it, especially yeah. everyone where it was their first through hike. Like they are so close and it just like broke my heart for all of them that they don't get that moment with the monument that like, it's such a little special place, like outside of time. <laughs> yeah, it is. And so the news came in and all these hikers are just devastated. Um, but the one really amazing thing about my trail family that you met is their ability to pick morale out of like a pile of shit. <laughs> um, and so we're all just sort of like really down, but we're like still joking and all that kind of stuff. And like, it's nice to know that even when the worst thing happens on that hike, which is that border being just untouchable, that I was with a group of people that somehow, you know, just dug it out. And it's not that you have to be positive all the time, but like, I really do value their ability to be like, well, you know, we can't change it. So let's like enjoy what we do have. Um, but in terms of, uh, ending it at Stahikin, there wasn't really anywhere else we could we could end it apart from um, Rainy Pass, which I mean, 
I told them, I was like, we don't, we'd hike 20 miles out of Stahican. We'd get there and it's just a road. Yeah. Like it's just a road and there's nothing special about it. Um, the hike there isn't even that pretty. You're just in trees the whole time. And I was like, you know, what if we just left in Stahican? Um, and I think it was actually someone else's idea to, to leave from then, but I was like, yeah, absolutely back that. So we were like, let's just, let's ferry out. Like, let's go to this magical place, which is Tahikin and the Tahikin bakery. And let's just leave on a ferry. And that's all we can do. Mm -hmm. Man, you guys, you guys did have a really good attitude about it, but yeah, what a freaking bummer. Um, oh my God. Heartbreaking. Yeah. Yeah. It sucked. <laughs> I'm getting some flashbacks yeah. now. Of course, mm -hmm. we didn't even make it all the way to Stahican, but that's just how it goes on the PCT, unfortunately. Yeah, especially now. Like, you're never guaranteed to touch that monument. Like, a lot of the time, people people just get lucky. Like, fires break out at the monument all the time. It's not been, you know, the first year it happened in 2015. It happened in 2018. It happened um, last year. So, like, it, it, it's it's just a flammable area. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's... with wildfires getting worse on the PCT, it's unfortunate, but like you may never be guaranteed the end. But I mean, that just speaks to the idea of like, enjoy the journey as much as you can, even yeah. if you get the gut punch at the end. Yeah. That's definitely like something that I've tried to reflect on quite a bit. Um, you know, after getting off the, off the trail, definitely a good little uh, tidbit to keep in mind for those that are going to be, those maybe are on the PC right now, are going to be hiking it in the future. Also, not what I wanted to hear when I'm thinking about going back because I'm going to be, oh man, if that shit's burning again, when I try to go back and finish it, oof. Um, well, I mean, you'll never be able to predict that. So just do it anyway. Exactly. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. For sure. For sure. Um, I'll definitely be, uh, I think appreciating things a little bit more the second, I, I'm not mm -hmm. hiking the whole trail again, but just going back to fill in those sections I missed. But yeah, anyways. I'll be back to fill in those sections for sure. <laughs> so anyways. <laughs> Anyways, Heaps, we're getting towards the end here. Um, I I gave you pretty ample notice to come up with a story, which is something I don't always do for my guests. But when I but when I do that, I always like to pat myself on the back a little bit. So you're <laughs> welcome. Um, <laughs> that's like a running joke on the show. Uh, so uh, yeah, I'm sure you have like tons of stories. We've already gotten into a bunch of them here, but um, you were able to come up with a, a good closing story for the end of the episode. Yes, I was. I'm going to tell you about the time that I did both my longest day of hiking ever and I um, got stalked by a mountain lion. Is that a good one? Uh, yeah. Oh, man. It's been a <laughs> while since we've had a mountain lion story on here. A, a proper yeah. mountain lion story anyways. So let's hear it. Yeah. So it was actually, it was last year. Um, I was in Northern California. I was with my massive trail family. We were rolling deep. Um, at that point. And I had just gotten into a town called Quincy um, with my friend who had come out um, called Woody. He's a, he's a botanist. He's done the PCT twice. Um, we fell a little bit behind only because the team was like, the crew was just ripping Northern California. Like they were fast little kids. Like they call me mum because I'm old and they were all so young, but like all my dirty little children, they're so fast anyway. And, um, we get into a town called Quincy. They're headed out that day because they got there the night before and everyone's pretty poor um, on the PCT last year. And so they're like, we're not staying another night. And I'm like, well, I need a night to just recover and, and go to the next stretch. So I'm like, okay, what I'll do is I'll stay tonight and I'll leave really early in the morning tomorrow and I'll catch up to you guys. Like, mm. just go ahead. I'll figure it out. Like, I can, I can break it out. So I have this thing that I do every year or every through hike where I think that I can be this consistent hiker. Like I'm suddenly just going to turn a page and suddenly I'm going to be good at leaving when I say I'm going to leave. <laughs> this does not happen. I do not get out at six. I get back to trail at like 1130. Like I just drag ass all morning. I go get a free ice cream. Like I am not in a hurry. Uh -huh. And I finally get back to trail and I'm trying to figure out the mileage and they're going to message me where they're going to stop that night. Um, and they're going to do a little bit of a, a, a shorter day for me so that I'm not, you know, hauling ass all the way yeah. to catch them. Unfortunately, I do need to haul ass to catch them anyway, because I've just left it so late um, as I do. 
And um, so I get out there, I'm, I'm, I'm headed out, I'm powering down the trail. Like it's hot as shit, but I am powering. And I've got my music in, like I've got all my prep, I've put all my snacks like in my, either in my mat, like bottom pocket on my, on my palante, or I've put it in my like fanny pack. So I'm like good to go. I don't need to stop like at all unless it's water. And I'm blasting it down the trail and I head first to this place called Belden. Um, you must know Belden, right? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. What a weird town. One of the strangest <laughs> yeah. stops on the VCT. <laughs> yeah. We didn't even know that there was a store there. Like I'm usually pretty good at planning ahead. Oh. Like I usually know what's coming up, but for some reason I just totally missed it. And so we rolled up to that store and we were like in shock. We were like, what? Like we can have food. Wow. And it was, it was a great feeling. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's like it's known for having a rave every once in a while when really? you go through there. Oh man! Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is the town where like all the burners go on burner off season or like pre burner season, and they have these like crazy alcohol fueled raves, <laughs> and the whole place just gets overtaken by like by like desert rave people. But anyway, um, there was not a rave there that day. I don't think there's been a rave there since the whole area was just burnt. This whole area was burnt to a crisp, unlike anything I've ever seen before on the PCT. And I head down into Belden. I'm like, okay, I'm going to get some people and I'm going to rally them. And we are going to night hike out of Belden. Cause by that point it's, you know, it's getting dark. I probably rock into Belden around like eight o'clock or so. Mm hmm. Um, with a couple of hikers that I've met along the way and I've done around 21 miles by this point. So I get in there and I'm like, I am going to rally the troops and we are going to hit this night hike. No one wants to join me. <laughs> and for some reason, that's a surprise. I'm like, you guys don't want to head out like tonight and like do a 13 mile climb in the dark. And I'm like, but, but it's hot. And they're all like, like heaps when we're not going with you. And I'm like, <laughs> Okay, fair, fair enough. Um, so I head out alone and I've vortexed myself at Belden until 11.30 at night, I think it was. And um, because I'm never good at getting into somewhere and then leaving, um, which I also convinced myself I'm good at. <laughs> and I head out, <laughs> I've got my headphones in, I'm like, we're not going to get scared. This is the, the longest hike. You've never had a night hiked like this by yourself for this long, but for some reason you can do this tonight. You've got to catch a trail family before they hit the halfway monument because you don't want to miss this like significant part in your journey. Yeah. So I like blast out and let me tell you, there are so many like spiders, like creeks. There's lots of like to burn areas so there's all these creepy sounds. So I am like blasting this music and um, I head out and I just, I crush 13 miles uphill. Like the one thing I can do, my technical downhill is terrible, but I can hit an uphill and I will just never stop. Like that's my thing. Like for some reason, I just get like boost ups when I'm <laughs> when I'm hiking uphill, um, and so I, I I absolutely smashed that first thirteen miles. And by that time, it's probably like I don't know, like one or two in the morning, and I suddenly realize in order to make it to my trail family by the time they usually get up, which is like five or six a.m., I'm probably going to have to walk the entire night. Oof. Uh, alone, yeah. And I'm like, well, I could just camp and meet them tomorrow in town. Um, but no, I won't do that. I don't, I don't want to. So I keep going. Um, I'm probably 31 miles in or so by this point. Um, in order to get to my trail family, I've got to do high forties, maybe like 48, 49. Yikes. And I'm, I'm just going to do it. Like, I'll just do it. Um, and so I'm, I'm walking there through the night. And the funniest thing I have to just quickly say is seeing people cowboy camped by themselves in the middle of this burn forest while you're just walking in the middle of the night. That's a great thought. They look, they look so stupid, like to the point where I had to go past them and start laughing. And then they would have just heard this laugh, this female laugh in the middle of the night. And I was like, this is probably not helping. Oh, that's like, creepy. Oh yeah, they're like, oh my God, it's a witch. They look um, so stupid. That's so funny. They look so, you just lay in there. Like, just completely still in a sleeping bag, no tent, just cowboy camp. They look dumb. Um, and my headlamp starts to look, just dies, actually. It dies completely. And I realized that I just didn't charge my headlamp, which I'm just, I'm not a very good through hiker. Like, 
I'm not good at this. <laughs> I, I make mistakes all the time. I haven't charged my headlamp. So I end up walking along or almost running, walking along and I've got my headlamp plugged in to my power bank and I've got to hold that in my hand and I've got my trekking pole in the other and I'm like trying to record shit on my phone. I'm like delirious. I haven't slept at all. And I'm like powering along. I must have looked ridiculous to anyone that woke up. That woke up. <laughs> and at one point I realized like I'm not going to make it by 5 a.m. Um, so I start running. So I'm running along, I've got everything. And then in the middle of the night, I friggin' hit like the tiniest stone on a flat part of trail. And I'm going so fast. I Superman, like in the middle of the air, all the way onto the ground. And I just skid along. Luckily I landed on like soft, vol like not volcano, soft burn ash. So like only my face and, and entire body are covered in this ash, but I don't hurt myself at all. <laughs> so I'm like, laying there covered in this ash like laughing at myself because i'm like of course this happens of course that happens and it's about two hours away from the sun coming up in the morning and i'm i'm, I'm powering along after that and i'm just covered in dirt just looking crazy and i see these eyes out the corner of 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 my vision and i'm like oh there's a deer here that's weird this is in the middle of the burn section like why are there deer here and then i'm like what well, it doesn't that deer looks a bit funny and my headlamp is so dim because it won't charge properly. It keeps turning off and stuff that I get like the tiniest amount of light to be able to hike in. There's no full moon, which I thought it was. It was actually the day after the full moon. So it was like as dark as possible. And I see these eyes and I look at them and I'm like, that looks so weird. And I was like, well, I'm just going to throw a rock at it and get this deer to go away. Cause I'm a little bit worried that's a mountain lion. Um, and I throw this rock doesn't move. Uh -oh. It doesn't even move an inch. And it's just staring at me and I'm like, well, a deer would have run away by now. And I was like, Aisha, this is in your head. You're not having a cool mountain lion encounter. Like you're not that cool. It's not happening for you. <laughs> and then I'm like, uh, well, I guess I should like try and scare it. So like this sort of like guttural voice comes out of me. So I, in my mind, I'm like, just pretend it's a mountain lion. So there's this deep booming voice and I hope no one was camped near there because they would have just heard, get out of here, <laughs> get, get out of here piss off you know yeah and i'm like throwing shit and i'm banging a trekking pole like on a rock as loud as i can it does not move and i'm like oh fuck <laughs> and then it looks to the side and then looks back at me and it's eyes either go from like gold to green or green to gold that's a mountain lion like that's how you can tell that the eyes that you're looking at are a mountain lion and i suddenly sort of come to this realization and i'm like oh no uh, and so I like pick up a rock, even though you're not supposed to bend down with a mountain lion encounter. I was like, well, I don't have anything. So I pick up this massive rock and I start walking along the trail. It slinks and it hovers and it's following me. And I'm like, oh my God, it must have been following me for so long while I was running. Like it loves a running target. And so now it's like, it's, like, I'm like, stop being obsessed with me. Right. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know how to get this thing to go away. So finally I'm like, well, you know, I hear with bear encounters, sometimes you play loud music. So the loudest song I had on my phone was by a band called the 1975. Ooh. And it's an, yeah, it's an emo song that they have called People. And I play People. Immediately, this mountain lion just fucking bolts. <laughs> and so, like, what the I sound learned of, in the that The sound moment, of Maddie Healy's voice was what did it, huh? <laughs> mountain lions hate Maddie Healy. Like, they <laughs> absolutely hate it and finally this mountain lion was gone and then luckily the sun was just coming up um about half an hour later so i didn't have to worry about this you know night stalking mountain lion uh. i mean i was watching but um yeah and then i finally get to the point where my trail family is can't find them and i'm like well they must have kept going i was like oh those total assholes <laughs> like they've kept going they told me they were gonna be here i just hiked through the night to find them <laughs> and so i keep going and i'm like oh my god i finally get to service about 10 miles later i get this message and they're like where the hell are you we need to start hiking oh no and i'm like what They've like hidden themselves somehow. I asked around the campground. No one had seen this like pack of ragtag misfits that are dressed <laughs> in crazy thrift store clothing. No one's seen them. And so it turns out I've gone 10 miles ahead at this point. They're behind me. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> 
maybe it wasn't 10, but it was a while. Yeah. It felt like a while. I'm delirious. I'm almost falling asleep while walking. I'm encountering hikers who are just starting their day after a nice sleep. And I'm like, I hiked through the night and <laughs> I saw a mountain lion. And they're like, okay, lady. <laughs> like, all right. Of course. <laughs> they're like, let's take you back to your home. Um, and... And I keep going. I finally meet up with all of them at the monument. By that point, it's like 1 p.m. in the afternoon or so, maybe 12. I'm not sure on times. So I was out of it. And then I have to hike all the way into town with them. So I end up doing 64 miles. And that's 102.9 kilometers. If, you know, not that I was counting. I was definitely counting. <laughs> um, and that was the longest day in my mountain lion encounter. Incredible. Man. Thank you. That is seriously incredible. I'm not just saying that. Like, I mean, <laughs> oh, the, uh, I don't know how you did it. Like, I was dead after like the 30 mile, whatever, not even overnight <laughs> hike that we did, leaving Acton. Like, oh, man. And throwing a freaking mountain lion, too. Like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm glad you made it. Yeah, I'm... I... Oh, go ahead. I was just like, this is the strangest night of my life. What is going on? And like, I have no one there to back up my story. Yeah. It's just me. And I'm just like, what is happening? <laughs> Am I dreaming this? Like, I don't understand what's going on. And the funniest thing about it, this sounds like a brag, but I was just surprised. My feet didn't hurt at all. That's incredible. That, that... I was so surprised. I mean, you just become made out of metal, like a hiking beast <laughs> in Northern California sometimes, you know? <laughs> I don't know. My feet still hurt pretty bad when I was in Northern California, but that's that's so okay, awesome. I know that's fair. Yeah. I'm so glad that you made it. I'm so glad that uh, the mountain lion didn't get the best of you. In fact, you got the best of it with uh, with some assistance from <laughs> from who else but Maddie freaking Healy. Um, Maddie Healy, the band that all lion mountains despise. <laughs> I'm sure a, a lot of other people do too, but no. I like some of their songs. Not just mountain lions. I only know a few, but I like some of them. Um, I think that's going to do it, Heaps. Thank you so much for uh, coming on here. Where can people go uh, follow you? Yeah, so you can follow me on Instagram. Um, where else? I'm going to start up a TikTok soon. And I'm actually currently editing um, three years worth of footage because I, I filmed all of my hikes. So I'm making an epic youtube video and then i will um post that on my instagram and i'll do video stuff from then on so i'm excited to venture into youtube awesome um yeah thank oh, you and for you can find me at it's it's at wild abound it looks like wild abound but it's <laughs> at wild abound <laughs> okay cool i'll have a i'll have a link to that in the uh, show notes everyone go follow her and thank you so much for listening everybody have a good one 